I bring up Surat Yusuf because he, at a young age he's already showing respect and open communication. That's critical for both parent and child. How many of us are having dinner every night with our children? And when you do sit and have dinner, how many of us are actually talking to our kids? Actually talking to our kids. You know, in the age of cell phones and texting and all this other stuff and cognitive dissonance, you can't even carry a real conversation with another human being, let alone your children. And I, alhamdulillah, I have three girls. Two of them were going to school up until last year. Now all three of them go to school. And I used to pick them up from their school. Do you know how much girls talk? It's Energizer Bunny's got nothing on girls. They could talk and talk and talk and talk. You could fall asleep, you wake up, you're still, they're still talking to you. They're still talking to you. They don't stop. And so I'm picking them up from school and when the yes starts telling me, how about you know what happened today? My hair clip fell out. My hair clip, the purple one fell out, but the pink one was still there. But when the purple one fell out, my friend said, hey, your purple one fell down. Pick it up. So I picked it up. I said, it's a little dirty. It's not that dirty. Then I cleaned it up a little bit. When I put it back on, it didn't get on the right way. So I took the purple one off and the pink one off too. And then my friend helped me put it back on. And you know what I should do at this point? I should say, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I'm totally zoned out. Not listening. But actually, I have to make it a conscious effort to actually listen and say, so what happened to the pink one then? What about the purple? I have to actually listen. Because you know, other, and if you're not listening, your kids know. Your kids know, if you're, especially girls, they're really sharp, they pick it up. Like I said, blah, 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 and you're going to say, uh-huh, uh-huh, they'll throw in, can I have $50? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> it's happened to me, I've caught myself, uh-uh. <laughs> right? It'll happen. It'll happen. But we have to become good listeners, especially the fathers. Especially the fathers. The, the, the moms naturally... Allah has given them certain gifts like parenting comes more naturally to a mother. Allah has given her that gift. He just makes her nurturing, soft, caring, concerned, just naturally. Fathers have to work on it. You're sitting at home, your child falls down. Who gets up immediately? Oh, my oh yeah. Who does that? The father? The father's sitting there, pick yourself up, child. In Urdu, say, kuch niwa, kuch niwa. Dust it off. Nothing, nothing. That's nothing. Don't worry about it. That's a little bit of blood. That's... The mom will go crazy. It's natural to her. I'm telling the fathers here, if we want our children to be raised in Islam, the first thing we need to be is their best friend. And that takes work. It takes serious work. Parents here, fathers here, you, but you guys have to get in shape. I'm serious. You have to get in shape. Not for yourself, for your kids. You come home, your kids want to play with you, and you just, Abba, pick me up, throw me around, do this, you do a little bit of that, and you're like, <gasps> Abba's got to lie down, hold on. <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's not how you raise kids. It, you know, taking our kids hiking, playing sports with them, taking them to the backyard. Even if they're playing video games, play video games with them. Play with them. You know, play the Wii with them. Bowl with, I don't care, just st do stuff with your kids. It's a critical part of opening barriers. So they can talk to you about anything. Because I'm telling you, when they reach a certain age, the need to talk to someone will always be there. You would rather that person be you, not some non-Muslim friend who will give non-Muslim kinds of advice.